Hello and welcome to another episode of Attention Span Labs. This will be your Weird War update. First in a little while. First video at all in a little while. I'm your host, Michael DeBaggio, and uh, I want to apologize to my loyal viewers who uh, do expect regular videos out of me and have so far been disappointed for many years. Um, but it is July 4th today. It is uh, very hot, so uh, uh, I ask your pardon if you hear the, a, a buzzing in the back from the air conditioner, which I had just set up. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in my, my third floor uh, area, which of course is the, going to be the hottest spot of the house. Uh, so I also apologize if you see any sweat or smelly body odor. Just get it on that last one. Most people can't afford televisions that, that can produce body odor. Anyway, uh, today I want to tell you about um, these Weird War pieces. Um, I don't like to think of my channel as purely a Weird War channel. It's whatever I like to talk about, but um, certainly my most popular videos are about, um, have been about Conflict 47. And uh, so I want to talk about some K-47 stuff, also some Dust Tactics and some Gear Creek stuff. Um, and some general model kits that I've been using. I also want to talk a bit about a, a book that I think it would be useful for any kind of weird war gaming. So let's start with uh, let's start with my scratch built piece here. As you can see, I'll move this these other kits out of the side here. <coughs> We're gonna just so I don't distract you. All right, there you go. You can see my my laser Tobruk here, a, Tob a Tobruk or Ringstande is a German uh, German reinforced fighting position, like a little bunker, um, where they, you know, where they would pour cement over foxholes or trenches or something, and maybe add a, a turret from a captured tank. But it's not it's not a full bunker; it doesn't have any large artillery or anything in it. Um, the name Tobruk comes from, of course, the city of Tobruk in northern Africa, which exchanged hands multiple times during World War II during the North African campaign. Um, and it was, uh, and and there were so many of these kinds of prepared fighting positions uh, that the name became associated with them. Anyway, this is um, a small breastwork part connected to uh, a reinforced concrete fighting position and on top to give it the weird war feel uh, instead of a, like a captured French tank or something like that or a captured British tank turret um, I used the uh, a 3d printed version of the German Schwerfeld projector from conflict 47 uh, the Schwerfeld's projector in the game are like some kind of there's some kind of force field uh, some kind of gravity weapon um, I you know that's fine but I think this is just a laser. It actually looks to me like what a, um, a free electron laser turret might look like. So anyway, let's talk about how I, I built this. really like this one. Friends of the channel, people who have been in the community for a while will, will have seen pictures of this when it was not remotely uh, done. But uh, all this is is a couple of pieces. Uh, you can almost see the seam there, I think. Um, a couple pieces of uh, packing styrofoam. Take these infantrymen out here. They were glued together, cut into a somewhat interesting irregular shape. Um, and this is a piece of three millimeter MDF. Glued to that, built up with sculpt -a mold, uh, covered the whole thing covered in spackle, and then. Um, this is covered in spackle, this is covered in sculpt mold and mixed in with sand and brown paint. So if it chips, it's, uh, you, don't, you don't really see it. That's my, my tip to you, is that when you use sculpt mold or plaster or anything like that, or spackle, uh, mix it in with paint because it will chip. It's pretty strong, but you know, just things happen, then you have to repaint it. And then, I actually initially did not put the camouflage cover on. But uh, if you can see in there, let me zoom in. I constructed a door out of plastic card, cut into the side with a hot wire cutter, 
cut some other pieces of foam off to make the, the buttresses here. And then these are just uh, stir sticks cut to length, um, cut in a regular pattern, like uh, planking for a trench to keep it down. And then uh, the batting here, same thing, uh, used to hold up like a retaining wall for the earth berm. And they're just, they're wood. I, I recommend that you use wood for your wood structures in your terrain. Nothing looks, uh, nothing's better than the real thing. And they're stained with wash. Uh, and then this, the piece of camo netting, you recognize what it is. That's right, it's a used dryer sheet, stretched out a bit. I hit it with a couple different um, colors of spray paint and then glued static grass tufts over it. It's not the most convincing thing. Um, you know, the camo netting is usually a little wider, but um, it looks, looks pretty decent to scale. Um, I think it looks visually pleasing, whether or not it's realistic. But uh, I've used this several times now in Bolt Act, well, K47 games, I guess. Um, both times it was uh, flattened by a uh, infantry flamethrower. Actually, no, light vehicle flamethrower. Um, and it, though it scored several hits, it actually, uh, I rolled very poorly. I'm really bad at rolling at K47 for whatever reason. Other games I seem to do all right in, but uh, same dice and everything. But anyway, this is this can be occupied by basically a squad of infantry. I, the rules are that two guys have to be inside to control this, and otherwise they can the other guys can fire. Now, and I, I did make it high enough so that standing miniatures, as you can see, can fire can believably fire over the top. So yeah, I like these little pieces of uh, themed weird war terrain. Of course, you can just use regular bunkers and stuff, and I do all the time. Um, your standard World War II pieces, but adding a little thing like this, uh, laser turret. Oh, and it's, it's magnetized. Drilled a hole in it. There's a magnet in there, and I have a little... Could have did that better. But there, that's made to be like a flat metal piece, and that's uh, just a piece of magnetic strip. So I can turn it freely. So there you go. Here's your laser to brook. And I, in the game, I treat this as a bunker. When I use the normal short fill projector rules. And this is good. Uh, you also use it as a flak piece. So it's good against, uh, it can be used against infantry, armor, or aircraft. All right. Enough of that. Let's go on to some um, gear creek stuff. Let's see. Can I... All right. This is a Dream Pod 9, uh, the company who makes Gear Creek, who makes heavy gear. Uh, they produce STLs, which, if you don't know, STLs are the files you use for, uh, for 3D printing. And this is the Loki transformable uh, uh, walking panzer. Looks a bit, it's shaped a bit like the Handle Mag half track. Um, so the idea is that these legs convert and they kind of transform down and you know fold out. The wheels come out. So when it's doing most of its travel over, when it needs to travel quickly over roads and open country, it goes down. It uses wheels. So there's wheels here, wheels in each leg, and then there's the wheel on the back. So it's three wheel system. Um, anyway, the, I built this. They do have the legs in the regular wheel mode, but what's the fun of that? So I did. I built it in walking mode. Uh, this is a bit of a kit bash. So most of this is just the 3D printed piece. Um, let's try and get get a better lighting situation here. Boy, I do have the windows wide open, and I have two lights on it, but uh, a bit reflective. Anyway, I hope you can see it. I think you can see it all right. Uh, this is a very detailed piece. Uh, I like the detailing on it, but I added some more stuff. Uh, I'll tell you what comes with it. This uh, the light auto cannon, the arms and everything. Um, it did come with a machine gun, but I didn't use that one because I had one already printed already. It comes with this smoke launcher here on the arm, and then the various details that are molded on the side. I added it uh, because I thought it needed some some gypsying up. I added this uh, MG42 with the gun shield, which I had printed for the dinosaur. You go back and watch that video. Uh, I had a bunch of them left over. 
and it was already sort of painted. So I put that in there. The driver, uh, the commander here, is a actual war. It's he's a warlord, warlord games miniature, um, who is meant to drive the Stug, which I haven't finished yet. I added some backpacks, some bed rolls. Do we need to zoom in on that? Um, from the let's see. I hope. Yep. Yeah. From the uh, the German Panzer Grenadier Spruce, which I already had, Falls from Jaegers. And then some other some little bits of greebling on the side. Um, toe, toe hitches and so forth on the front. And then I constructed uh, this radio antenna set. This is going to be a command mech. Uh, I constructed that out of some pieces from some old one, one thirty-fifth scale tanks I had, like a, I think an M one hundred nine Paladin and some other stuff. Um, the idea behind this in my in my games is that this is actually uh, uh, this particular antenna is used based on a uh, novel design necessary for long-range communications in the inner world, in the German Pellucidar colony, uh, because there's no, uh, you know, radio is going to obviously work. You're going to have to worry about wave propagation differently in a world where there's no stratosphere, um, where the, you're actually in the middle of a, of, a, of a concave disk, a concave sphere. So that's why it looks a little weird. All right. Yeah, so anyway, is that realistic? No, I have no idea. Um, but I uh, wanted to make something that looked a little weird, but then also have some kind of explanation in it. And I think that makes some makes for good world building. Okay. Enough said about that. Oh, I, I painted this. This is my first time painting like the feathered, feathered edged uh, camouflage. And I use like kind of this the string type. Um, I did get this off uh, the idea of how to do this off the. Um, there's a, a Vallejo book on painting Flames of War and uh, World War III Team Yankee miniatures. So it's basically you, you draw the line in and then you mix mix the color of the line 50-50 with the, the background color, in this case the Dunkel Gelb, and kind of feather out the edges. I think it came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. All right. With that, on to some more basic stuff here. Uh, this is, you've seen this before too. This is an Opal Blitz Multier, which I just uh, 3D print it, entirely 3D print it, and I just painted it. Not much to say about it, but looks, looks pretty good. Workhorse vehicle. Um, speaking of German camouflage, let's look at my new tank. This is a a Panther Osf D, I think. Um, this is actually not a Warlord kit. This is a Rubicon Models kit, which I had for a while. Uh, and finally, when I put it together, the interesting thing to me about this one is actually is the assembly part because I, I did it smart. Uh, I decided to start spray painting it when it was still on the sprue, then take it apart and assemble the sub assembly separately. So I made the tracks tracks actually each track in two pieces and painted the treads individually because uh, I like to give the German oxide primer there as you can sort of see more on the bottom than weather them then uh, paint the wheels separately uh, and only then glue it to the main chassis which was also painted separately then I put the camouflage on and the side skirts and this that turned out to be a lot less stress and it was a lot quicker as well uh, just because you're not trying to squeeze in with a brush and constantly fixing stuff. This is a very similar um, technique to how I camouflage the other one except with wider swatches. The other one being the Loki I just showed you. I mean, not the other Panzer. But yeah, this is, I, I really like this one. Did the, the rust detailing on the back of the, the exhaust. A lot of chipping and weathering. 
but not super, not super much so. There we go. I really like this one, came out really good. My uh, original, as you can see, the let's take a look at the driver, and I'll tell you about her in a minute. She's part of my Girls in Panzer, Panzer Army, which you've seen already with uh, uh, Duchess Tilda, the Panzer Princess, the, the Duchess of uh, New Schwabenland, Unholwelt. Well, this is a different driver, but she's part of her all-female uh, Pellucidarian tank corps. But my original, this was originally, originally, of course, going to be the Pink Pantheress. And uh, I originally did paint, what I thought was to paint the whole vehicle pink, and I was like, nah. Um, I really want it, after I, after I did the camouflage on the other one, on the Loki, I liked it so much I wanted to continue it. So my thought was I would make the, the, uh, the turret pink. And I did, and it looked okay, but it actually... Um, really looked like a, a sun-dyed yellow um, in contrast with, with the hull. Um, it looked like a desert kind of camouflage that had been worn down, lost its luster in the sun, which I, I don't know if any, any paint does that, but I, you know, I know the British actually painted their, uh, their Jeeps pink, pink and blue in, in, for, for desert camouflage in the LRDG. But uh, so anyway, so I went back and just added the camouflage, and I think it's good. But let me tell you a bit about her. Again, she's from my Girls on Panzer Force. Uh, this is Fahnen Junker Unterfeldwebel Heidi Marie Hoch, and commanding her tank, the Pink Panthress. The vehicle was originally painted entirely pink, which, while it delighted on the parade ground, quickly proved the liability during the opening stages of the American invasion when it suffered three tourist strikes by anti-tank guns, all thankfully non-penetrating. Unlike most of Duchess Tilda's tankers, Heidi Marie is not a native of the inner world, but rather the aggressive and somewhat obnoxious daughter of a German East African uh, colonial official and a Southern American merchant heiress who spent a large part of her youth growing up in Texas, tuning and racing motorcycles. She speaks English with a Southern accent and is intimately familiar with most U.S. and C.S. mechanized vehicles and doctrine. And she, of course, uh, is a, just like Duchess Tilda on the other tank, um, I designed her in Hero Forge and printed her out. Trying to get a bit of here. Oh. There we go. And she was fun to paint. She has the yellow ribbon around her neck, a pith helmet. Bear midriff. Hey, it's hot in blue cigar. All right, it's uh, Heidi Marie Hawk and the Pink Panthers. All right, next. You know, let's go on to this guy here. This is a oh wow. Light's not showing good on him. Well, what can we do here? Nope. There we go. This is a Dust Tactics miniature. It's a crazy gorilla with a Tesla, Tesla backpack on him, Tesla gauntlets, something like that. I don't know what he's actually using in Dust. Um, I got him from a Dust uh, Tactics expansion set. I think he's from the Operation Sea Lion set. Pretty cool, very cool miniature. Yeah, and if there are Weird War Germans for whatever reason, they must have um, cyber gorillas, which actually that was a, a Russian thing, supposedly. Uh, I really wish someone would make a man pansy or a, um, you know, whatever they were called, a human -Z. Supposedly that Stalin had the um, crossbred men chimpanzees that could carry Kalashnikovs. You know, I'd like to see them in miniature setting. It's a classic uh, Weird War conspiratorial thing. And you can't see him too. I apologize uh, because of his dark color. But anyway, it's a very nice miniature. Let me tell you something about dust, first of all. Uh, when, when I made the, the first 
Conflict 47 video, uh, I got about four or five um, unfriendly comments that like attacking me for not talking about dust and not talking about um, you know secrets of the secret weapons of the Third Reich and these other weird war games. Um, mainly those two, and uh, I don't know why uh, they made it out like I. Uh, you know, and I didn't say anything bad about either. I didn't. I hardly said anything at all about them, um, uh, and so I don't know why these these guys were menstruating all over the place about my my failure to uh, to talk about it. Uh, but you know, they were they were attacking me as if you know I can't. If you if you play the one game, you can't play the other. Real Games Workshop fag kind of idea that you know you can only like one game. Um, uh, so I don't have anything against Dust. I'm not a shill for Warlord Games and Conflict 47. God knows they've never sent me anything, and I'm, I'm sure they never will um, to review. Even though, <clears throat> even though my Conflict 47 is, I think, still the second most watched Conflict 47 video on YouTube. Um, so if you're listening, I'll take miniatures. Then again, they'd have to make new miniatures, which they haven't done in like two years. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, so I don't have anything against these other Weird War games. In fact, I bought Nuts Weird War, which is uh, really cool. I like the idea of it. Here, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. It's this game. Nice spiral bound. You know, it's a, it's the regular Nuts game. It has the full Nuts rules um, and the Weird War stuff in it. So, anyway, um, that's a cool game. I, I never played Dust Tactics. I like the miniatures, but I don't. Uh, the mechs are really good. The mechs are great, but they're they're. I think it's like one thirty fifth scale, so it's it's not twenty eight millimeter. The the regular guys are too big um, for it. it. It's like true scale, but still, um, I I like it. Uh, I, I love the designs of them. They're hard to find. It's out of print now. Same secret weapons of the Third Reich. Um, there's there's cool miniatures. I don't have any of them. I like it. There's nothing nothing wrong with it. There's no I'm not not saying that you're not allowed to play that. You know, I don't know why people got a uh, some some uh, jackholes got a big bug up their ass about it, and uh, you know would go on these ridiculous arguments arguments with me about it until I, I blocked half of them, um, and then one of them even went on to. Uh, find all my all my books on Amazon and, and leave one star reviews. He never bought them or read them, obviously. Um, yeah, but he, he was having a real a, a, a real cunt out about it. And uh, and I, yeah, I believe he was he was mad about I forget whether he, he, he was mad about dust. I, I think he was mad about dust in particular. So, um, you know, so this is just life on the Internet. I can imagine people like that have any, uh, they probably don't ever actually play any games or have any friends to play with, so. So you should have friends in real life because <clears throat> when you do, they'll do stuff for you like this. This is a uh, German Haunabu 2 model kit by Ravel, Ravel Germany. Um, this is the famous kit that was discontinued in Germany because the box made it sound like this was a real vehicle and I, I can't imagine why anybody got upset about that. It's a fiction piece. Um, you know, you, you want to talk about a fictional world thing. Anyway, um, because this was hard to find, this was several years out of production when I bought it. It was, uh, and this is 172 scale, but um, since, you know, no one actually, it's probably not real. Um, I won't say conclusively it's not real, but um, no one, it, it looks fine. Let me put it next to some. Uh, German infantrymen, so you can see what I'm talking about. I think it looks reasonable, comparable to 156, 156 or 148, whatever these guys actually are. Uh, it looks good. Um, so anyway, uh, I paid like 70 bucks for this, but it was the best model. Uh, I, I liked this model. There's several German flying saucer models. Uh, but when I got it, it took me a while uh, to get it painted. Uh, and, I, and you can actually see some uh, defects on from leaving too much layered paint on because I could never get this, this the, uh, the stencils for the splinter camouflage right 
But I sent it to my friend Jeff, who, who games with us. He plays the Japs in Conflict 47 uh, when we play. And uh, he's, he's much better with an airbrush than I am, and he has much more patience and was able to use the, uh, the stencils that we got from uh, the place in Old Forge. I forget what they're called. I'll put a link uh, in the video. But they have this nice splinter camouflage. Um, yeah, these stencils. And then he, he did that. He did most of it. I painted some of the decals, put the decals on. Decals are a bit shiny. I did gloss them, but I think there's gloss underneath them. Uh, but I, I, did think, I do think there's something maybe a little weird about these decals that make them a bit too shiny. And someone actually said, there's another reviewer on Amazon that said the same thing. This is Aragnal Rock. Yeah, this is the German Haunabutu. Um, uh, I don't know. Let me see if I can tilt this up a bit so you can see the underside a little better. Um, it has three heavy or light auto cannon. I haven't used it as an actual weapon in the game, it only as a piece. But uh, yeah, as I said, uh, if you if you don't um, chimp out on people on the internet about uh, games they supposedly hate just because they don't mention them, um, you'll eventually develop actual social contact, and you can go and play games with people and uh, trade minis with them, and they'll some of them may even have good skills that can you know, offer to help you. So, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. This looks awesome. Um, definitely, got, probably mainly a terrain piece, but you never know. Why not use it as a uh, an, air, an aircraft for an airstrike as well? Perfect for the German uh, for the German Pellucidar colony for the new Schwabenland area. Um, there are actual that that nuts weird war book. There's actual uh, stats for the Houndbu. All right. So one more, and it is this American Piaseki H25 helicopter. This is uh, an Atlantis 148 scale kit, model kit. I got this at Ollie's in a three pack with a uh, one two, one one hundredth something scale, um, one one forty fourth scale PT boat and a one forty eighth scale Sherman, which would go pretty well uh, with that. But uh, this is a uh, one forty eighth scale looks really good. These with those miniatures. It's a small helicopter. Um, and what can I say? It's a nice, it was an easy kit to put together. Um, finally got to use the model glue that doesn't leave the film and dries crystal clear for the canopy. Put that on last. I, I mainly spray painted this, then dry brushed it, filled in the, did some target washes. And the, as you can see, the um, decals for these came out much better. I use the micro saw or micro set. Yeah, so this is a uh, how weird war is this? Well, I mean, in real life, this was this was first flown in 19 entered service, um, U.S. Army, U.S. Navy service in 1949. So it's it, it's reasonable. I think like weird war is not just sci-fi weapons. It's not just mechs and UFOs and uh, you know vampires and werewolves. It's also you know maybe they get um, jet fighters sooner. They get more helicopters sooner. Uh, you know, I know there were helicopters used in World War II, uh, but, you know, more of them. Well, there you go. That's my Weird War update for July 4th. Um, oh, forgot. I want to talk to you about other books that are you know, sort of good Conflict 47 books that are not directly Conflict 47. This is an Osprey book called The Nazi Occult, written by Kenneth Haidt, and I'm sure... Anybody who's into horror role-playing games, um, who knows about the Gumshoe games or anything like that, that they know about uh, Kenneth Height. He's written a couple of books for Osprey. Um, I like this one the best. This is a really, really good resource for weird world war gaming. This is written, this is the kind of book, I guess, that would be banned in Germany, <laughs> just like the Hound of Boo, um, because it's, it, it presents it as if it's real. Uh, some of the details are real, um, and other ones are, interp are interpolated, obviously, but... There's some the Nazi uh, Himalayan investigators meeting the Yeti. Um, you know, 
some Indiana Jones type stuff. There's, there's the UFOs in the back here. There you go. It's hound of booze that are electric weapons and vortex cannons fighting a, the Operation High Jump operation in Antarctica. Uh, actual German Werwolfs attacking MFA units. Um, yeah, there's some great illustrations in here. This is the raid on Zerzura. Um, Zerzura being a, a lost Egyptian oasis. Um, there's stuff in here, the Octavian Bells, uh, the Glock, the Glocka, um, the Holy Grail, of course. Um, just Nazi cult stuff and the Vril Society. And, anyway, de definitely recommend this book. I've used this book part as the, in my next video, I'm going to talk about uh, some desert buildings terrain I, I've been using, uh, both that I bought that were made for me and that I've made in myself. Um, and the, uh, the campaign for Zerzura is another, is in the same universe as the German Pellucidar, the, the American uh, intervention in Advatabar, the invasion of German Pellucidar. Um, so um, we'll talk a bit, a bit more about that in the next video. But I, I definitely want to recommend this book. It's an excellent Weird War resource. Uh, it's like 15, it's between 15 and 20 bucks. Uh, I said it's an Osprey, Osprey Adventures, Osprey Horror book, Dark Osprey. Um, they have a lot of books like this. There's one on like the uh, the American War Against the Mythos, um, the War on Horror, as he calls it, also written by Kenneth Hite. There's uh, Roman stuff against the Cthulhu Mythos. There's stuff on Atlantis and King Arthur and Charlemagne and um, dinosaur hunters, stuff like that. But uh, this, if you if you like playing weird World War II, definitely get this book. All right, and that's all I have to say for that topic for the Weird War update. Thank you for watching. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Like most people, most of my viewers are not subscribers. Uh, but uh, let me know if you want to see more videos like this. You want to know more about the, um, the fictional world I developed. I do have some written on it, but uh, I'm lazy, honestly. It's, it's hard to get these videos out. Uh, but if, if you really want to see them, then I'll, I'll put more work into 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 doing those kind of source material videos. Um, stay tuned for our next one, which will be about uh, desert buildings. And then I have some other interesting topics I want to go over, including magazines, um, Wargaming magazines, of course. I mean, uh, there was that poll question put out a while ago about uh, role-playing games, um, the biggest mistakes people, newcomers make to role-playing games, and so forth. So anyway, uh, I hope to see you soon. Uh, to the Real Americans out there, the few that are left, happy Independence Day. God bless.